Hello there, it's my pleasure welcoming you to another episode of Word Bits with the Beloved Vocals, a podcast dedicated to sharing God's love notes with you and the world. I'm Chika, the Beloved Vocals, and I'm privileged to share God's heart with you today. We see from the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God's heart is revealed unto us that our sins are forgiven and dealt with. We've risen to a new life in Him. Now we ought to live the rest of our lives for His glory. Before I delve further into today's love note, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for another day, another opportunity to share your love with your people. All I ask is that you be glorified in our midst and the name of Jesus remain exalted in the hearts of all who hear today's message. In Jesus' name, Amen. In previous love notes, we've been talking about salvation, which cannot be exhausted in one day. God's love for you and I was clearly displayed when Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross and his blood became the pure atonement that took our sins away. Also, when you trust in Christ as your Savior, you receive salvation. In addition to the eternal benefits of salvation, which is everlasting life with Christ in heaven, There are other benefits of salvation that you can experience here on earth. So far, I've highlighted these other benefits from our scripture focus in Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 2. I encourage you to visit that episode and of course other episodes of Love Notes. Listen to them so as to catch up with what you may have missed. Today, we shall continue from the same scripture in Romans chapter 5 but looking at verses 3 to 4. And we see that salvation gives us triumph through God. For it reads, Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. You see, as a Christian, you will have many trials that will come into your life. Once you accept Jesus, Satan will immediately be opposed to you and your decision that he will work to send as many trials and temptations into your life as he can. This does not surprise our Lord Jesus. That's why in John chapter 16 verse 33, Jesus told his disciples this. He said, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus warns that this will happen. It's not a surprise to him. However, since he has overcome the world, you and I can have triumph through God. It is interesting to note that from these verses, the words endurance, character, and hope are three good things to have, and it can only come because of challenges. You see, in John chapter 15, verses 1 to 2, Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. God uses these trials to prune and cultivate us believers. As a result of this pruning, the believer will bear more fruit and will then have a better witness for God. Hallelujah. Now moving on to verse 5 of Romans chapter 5. We read, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts. So, evidently, salvation brings us the offer of God's love. God loves you, dear friend. He always has and He always will. This is something that is important to remember as you go through your life. There is nothing that you can do to make God stop loving you. There is nothing that you can do as well to make God love you more. He loves you perfectly and unconditionally right now. God's love is why he sent his son Jesus into the world. We read in John chapter 3 verse 16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Also, moving forward in Romans chapter 5 verse 8, The scripture shows us how God demonstrated his love. It says, But God shows his love for us in that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
Jesus died for your sins before you were even born. Before you ever called out to him, God sent his son to earth for your sins. This is where God shows his love for you. Yes, you. God loves you and wants to save you. And if you're saved already, I want you to take a moment and appreciate him for saving you. So let's continue with that verse 5 that says God's love was abundantly poured out to us through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Verse 6 also says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The Amplified Translation of Romans chapter 5 verse 6 says that, While we were yet in weakness, powerless to help ourselves, at the fitting time, Christ died for in behalf of the ungodly. So in these verses, we see that the Holy Spirit is given to every believer at salvation. The moment you believe in your heart that Jesus died for you, you confess him as your savior, that very moment you receive his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes the love of God real in the lives of believers and teaches them what God has said. This is what Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 26 when he was explaining about the Holy Spirit. He said, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. When you become a Christian, you receive the Holy Spirit in your life to help you live a godly life here on earth, to help you live the life of Jesus. Jesus said this in John chapter 16 verse 8 when he was talking about the ministry of the Helper, the Holy Spirit. He said, And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. How many people do you know would die for you? While there might be someone or perhaps a few people in the world who will die for you, there are probably not that many. However, this is exactly what Jesus did. He died for all the sins that you will commit in your whole life and gave you his spirit to now help you live a life that pleases him, a life above sin. That is absolutely amazing. If you're not a Christian, Today would be a great day to become one. In fact, the word Christian simply means Christ-like. All I'm urging you to do is become like Christ by accepting him into your life so that his spirit comes to live inside of you, helping you in your journey, this journey of life, helping you to live in a way that gives God all the glory. Remember, your life isn't yours. You came from someone and he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to help you and show you the best pathway for your life. If you're already a Christian, I want to encourage you to be a faithful witness for Christ wherever you are, living a life that honors him while you enjoy these benefits of salvation. I pray for you that this love of God shared abroad in your heart will keep you in his perfect peace, irrespective of the turmoil in the world, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friend, There is more about this salvation which by God's grace we'll be discussing in our next episode. If you're yet to make this important decision of your life, now is a perfect opportunity to do so. Or if you've once received salvation but circumstances made you disregard or throw away this precious gift, today my friend, now at this very moment, is another opportunity to rededicate yourself to his love. I want you to pray after me. Lord Jesus, I confess my sin before you and receive your forgiveness. I repent of my worldly ways and choose you as my Savior. I ask that you come into my life and reign as my Lord and my Master. Help me to live for you as I await your glorious return again to take me to you forever. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In your most holy name I pray. Amen. Huge congratulations to you, dear friend, and welcome back to the family of God. True to his word, right now you have peace with God. You have access to God because Jesus Christ has become your great high priest. He has poured out his spirit on you and now you have a God life on the inside of you and through relying on this same Holy Spirit, you can be sure that you'll begin to live a life that pleases and glorify God. That's absolutely worth celebrating. 
Let me also remind you that before God right now, you're flawless simply because Jesus is now your righteousness. You can then enjoy his friendship. You're automatically qualified to operate in the authority of his name. You're his ambassador. Now your life is lived to tell others about him. The list is endless, dear friend. So huge congratulations to you once again. If you just said the prayer of salvation, I'd like to hear from you. If you need help on how to grow in your walk with God or how to enjoy this salvation package, I encourage you to join a local church around you so you can learn more and have other believers support you on your new journey. Or better still, you can send me an email via thebelovedvocals at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening in. God bless you. Until next time, stay blossoming and have a Godful day. Cheers.